His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Commission for the Royal Fund for Fallen Servicemen, the RFFS, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired a meeting of the Supreme Commission at Gadebia Palace. His Royal Highness emphasised the steadfast support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the Supreme Commission, highlighting its role in providing care for the families of fallen servicemen and assuring they lead prosperous lives. His Royal Highness affirmed that the honourable sacrifices of the fallen servicemen serve as a source of inspiration for current and future generations, emphasising that the sacrifices are forever etched in the Kingdom's history. His Royal Highness underscored the Fund's vital role in supporting the families of fallen servicemen and ensuring the needs are met. His Royal Highness highlighted the efforts of the Fund's administrators in fulfilling its objectives and achieving the purposes for which it was established. His Royal Highness paid tribute to the chivalry and courage of the Kingdom's fallen servicemen, expressing his gratitude and appreciation to the Bahraini citizens who continue to demonstrate dedication, loyalty and integrity in safeguarding the Kingdom and its people. The most prominent topics on the Fund's agenda, as well as mechanisms to support the Fund's families, were reviewed. The National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander and Vice President of the Supreme Commission for the Fund, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuwaymi, and the committee members also attended the meeting. The Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed al Masalim received at National Audit Office the NAO Auditor General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa to present the NAO's 21st Annual Report for the 2023 to 2024 professional year. Al Masalim reaffirmed the Legislative Authority's commitment to enhancing oversight and parliamentary rules, upholding integrity and accountability, and ensuring the optimum use of and pres preservation of public funds. He stressed that these efforts support the development and sustainability of governmental operations, contributing to the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Amu Salam commended the pivotal role of the NAO in safeguarding public funds, ensuring accountability and promoting productivity and efficiency. The Auditor General highlighted that the NAO's progress since its establishment is the result of the continued support of His Majesty the King and the Directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to ensure the implementation of the NAO's recommendations by audited entities. The Shura Council has ranked first in the Arab world and 13th globally out of 115 parliaments across 80 six countries in the Digital Maturity Index as detailed in the World E-Parliamentary Report 2024 by the Interparliamentary Union, the IPU. On this occasion, the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, attributed the achievement to the directives of His Majesty the King, as the Royal Speeches during previous sessions have underscored the importance of digital and economic reforms, guiding the Council in developing initiatives that leverage Bahrain's high-tech digital capabilities. Al Sali stressed the Council's commitment to integrating advanced technologies, particularly in artificial intelligence AI, to enhance legislative work and support government initiatives, and acknowledged the continuous support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in this field. He also noted the Council's actively engages in parliamentary seminars and meetings regarding digital tools and AI to enhance experiences and highlight its successful implementations of modern technologies across various sectors. This ranking highlights the Council's advanced use of information technology and digital tools to support legislative process and its adoption of the e-parliamentary model.
The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rash bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the graduation ceremony for participants in a specialised forensic training programme. The event was attended by senior Ministry of Interior officials, the UK Ambassador to Bahrain and Assistant Chief Constable of Durham Constabulary in the UK. The programme, conducted in collaboration between the Royal Academy of Police and Durham Constabulary, is a comprehensive training initiative aimed at enhancing the skills of forensic specialists. It includes courses on crime scene investigation, fingerprint analysis, specialised training modules and initiatives designed to equip participants with the ability to train others ensuring the sustainability of the programme. The Minister emphasised the importance of integrating advanced technologies and AI into security services to improve precision and efficiency. He highlighted the need to adopt modern practices in evidence collection and to strengthen reliance on physical and digital evidence to uphold criminal justice. The Minister also noted the ongoing strategy to update and modernise security operations, ensuring that officers are equipped to address evolving security challenges. The Chief of Public Security, Major General Tarek Al Hassan, highlighted the role of the Royal Academy in preparing and developing qualified personnel to lead and enhance security and policing efforts in Bahrain. He underscored the collaborative training projects to modernising the Bahrain Police Force, enabling it to provide the best service and maintain public safety. Assistant Chief Constable of Durham Constabulary, John McAdam, commended the collaboration with the Ministry. A documentary was screened detailing the training projects implemented under Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, signed in July 2018 between the Ministry of Interior and Durham Constabulary. The MOU aims to deliver four advanced internationally accredited training programmes to enhance the capabilities of ministry personnel in line with modern policing challenges. General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah presented certificates to the graduates, expressing his appreciation to Durham Constabulary for their expertise and contributions to the programme and to the Royal Academy of Police for its role in training and development. The Minister wished all participants continued success in serving the Kingdom. The Prime Minister of Mongolia, Oyun Erdina Luzan Ramzai, and his accompanying delegation visited Bahrain Economic Development Board, the EDB. In the presence of Cabinet Affairs Minister Faisal Al Malki, the Minister of Sustainable Development, Nur Al Khalaif, and the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakro, and EDB officials. The Minister of Sustainable Development highlighted Bahrain's commitment to consolidating and developing global partnerships, noting the Kingdom's competitive advantages and strategic location in the heart of the Arabian Gulf. She affirmed EDB's keenness to support initiatives that enhance the investment-friendly environment and develop Bahrain's role as a vital economic centre for international investors, seeking to take advantage of the opportunities offered by the region. Minister of Housing and Urban Planning and Chairperson of Eskan Bank Board of Directors, Amna Bint Ahmed Arumehi, lauded the Beiti Real Estate Platform for receiving the Best Digital Initiative in Retail Banking Award at the BAB Digital Transformation Awards. She noted that the award reflects significant advancements in government digital services and efforts to support digital transformation. 
The Minister said that the platform has gained increasing popularity due to its diverse property options that align with housing finance schemes such as Tashil and the newly introduced Messiah category. Arumehi also stated that Beatty offers flexibility to browse property details, sizes and prices while interactive features assist citizens in selecting, reserving and completing a property purchases through ministry financing directly on the platform. She stressed the government's continued efforts to implement digital transformation plans under the government programme 2023 to 2026, which aims to fully digitalise government services and transactions. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce announced the launch of the national initiative to encourage the commercial sector in its third edition to coincide with the celebrations of Bahrain holiday season. Minister of Industry and Commerce Abdullah bin Adel Fakhro noted that the initiative aims to exempt the commercial sector from promotional campaign fees and extend the periods of commercial discounts in local markets and commercial complexes in the kingdom, pointing out that the initiative contributed and played a vital role in enhancing commercial movement and serving the national economy in the kingdom. The Minister also affirmed the continuous efforts to cooperate with the commercial sector to make local markets a competitive destination for consumers praising the remarkable efforts of the commercial sector in upgrading experiences in the field of marketing campaigns and consumer protection in Bahrain's holiday season in particular, in order to upgrade local markets and commercial complexes and make them more qualified and attractive to citizens, expats and tourists. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tafiki, attended the conclusion of the Cultural Media Forum for GCC Youth she said that the forum, which featured emerging Gulf media talents, showcased success stories, promoted cultural and media collaborations and shed a spotlight on innovative youth initiatives. Tofiki highlighted the importance of empowering youth, recognising their ability to adapt to modern technologies and turn innovative ideas into real-world successes. She highlighted the forum's role in cultivating a new generation of media and cultural professionals capable of navigating the rapid developments in the field. The Minister honoured the youth delegations participating in the forum and also honoured the speakers and sponsors in recognition of their efforts in achieving the objectives of the forum. Bahrain, represented by the Ministry of Social Development, secured first place for the best theatrical performance at the 7th GCC Theatre Festival for Persons with Disabilities held in Qatar to mark the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, organised by Qatar's Ministry of Social Development and Family. The Minister of Social Development, Usama al expressed pride in this achievement, which reflects the excellence of Bahraini talents and their ability to achieve successes in various cultural and artistic forums, stressing the Ministry's commitment to continue supporting them and providing opportunities that allow them to create and shine in enriching the cultural and artistic scene. He also congratulated the team that contributed to achieving the success, praising their efforts that resulted in presenting an integrated show that reflects the values of creativity and teamwork. The Minister praised the efforts of GCC countries to support events that highlight the creativity of people with disabilities. The Minister of Social Development, Usama al said that the celebration of the International Volunteer Day, which falls on December the 5th every year, is a motivation to promote voluntary work in addition to its role in urging civil society organisations to cooperate in promoting the values of citizenship and social solidarity. He pointed out that this day is an opportunity to highlight the spread of the culture of volunteering, support the efforts of all volunteers and raise the awareness of the importance of community service to achieve various developmental goals. The Minister explained that volunteering is a reflection of the values of cooperation and solidarity that characterise the people of Bahrain. He expressed pride in the voluntary initiatives that have contributed to supporting the developmental renaissance in all sectors. He noted that the Ministry of Social Development pays great attention to promoting the culture of volunteering by organising projects and initiatives of civil society organisations as a key partner in achieving sustainable development and promoting social solidarity. The Minister called on volunteers to continue the achievements made in the field of voluntary work and joined the march of construction and giving that enriched the experience of voluntary work and made it a distinguished model in the fields of humanitarian work at all levels.
The Social Development Ministry pays attention to voluntary work by harnessing all means in front of NGOs and their vital role in society by fully coordinating the mechanism of work in these associations in order to consolidate the values of charity and achieve sustainable development goals. Bahrain is a pioneering role in the field of sponsoring civil organisations to promote voluntary work and its main role in serving society, reflecting the advanced levels reached by voluntary and charitable work. The Ministry's strategy is based on supporting civil work and supervising the projects adopted by civil society organisations. The effective and vital role played by the Ministry has greatly contributed to organising the work of NGOs, reaching a high level and progress of development through its content pursuit of excellence in serving the Bahraini society and enhancing the values of cooperation, in addition to promoting humanitarian and charitable work. Bahrain is one of the leading countries in the field of voluntary work at the regional level, as this activity reflects the authentic values of the Bahraini society and its long-standing traditions of solidarity. More in this report. The culture of voluntary work is rooted in the thought of Bahraini citizens, as it enhances their belonging to their country, maximizes their participation in society, develops their personal and scientific abilities and skills, and gives them the opportunity to express their opinions in various fields. The interest of the people of Bahrain in the fields of voluntary work shows the extent of support and care that this good humanitarian work enjoys from the His Majesty the King and His Majesty's directives to support voluntary work and community service. The interest of the people of Bahrain in the fields of voluntary work shows the extent of support and care that this good humanitarian work enjoys from the His Majesty the King and His Majesty's directives to support voluntary work and community service. Launched in 2017, the King Hamad Award for Youth Empowerment is a pioneering initiative aimed at empowering youth from around the world. More recently, the King Hamad International Center for Peaceful Coexistence has become a global platform for spreading the values of peace and volunteerism. The Fina Khair campaign not only supported families affected by the economic repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic in Bahrain, but also inspired Gulf and international countries. Bahrain cooperates with international organizations such as the United Nations Development Program to support humanitarian and development projects in different parts of the world. Bahrain has also contributed to providing humanitarian relief aid to support countries affected by natural disasters and humanitarian crisis. These initiatives demonstrate Bahrain's role as a pioneer in promoting voluntary work, becoming an inspiring model in the region, where volunteering efforts contribute to building a more solidarity and prosperous society. In the presence of Injaz Bahrain Chairperson and Member of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Highness Sheikha Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa inaugurated the group art exhibition Portrait of Bahraini Women at Shurifali Kanu Art Centre on the occasion of Bahraini Women's Day. Her Highness reviewed the exhibition's work, which included more than 42 works of art, with the participation of more than 33 Bahraini artists. Her Highness praised the directors of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women in supporting Bahraini art, which have played a major role in refining and highlighting the artistic potential of Bahraini women, who recorded local, regional and international achievements and inspiring success stories. Her Highness emphasised the importance of the exhibition in showcasing the intellectual, creative and artistic product of all Bahraini artists. She also praised the relentless efforts of the Bahrain Trust Foundation to develop the skills of the youth. She expressed appreciation and admiration for the participating works. The chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, led Bahrain's delegation participating in the first Gulf Jordan Investment Summit, organised by Jordan Chamber of Commerce and the Federation of Gulf Chambers. NAS affirmed the importance of capitalising on the economic potentials and assets of GCC countries in Jordan and translating them into cooperation projects, noting the consensus of visions between the leaders of GCC and Jordan and establishing a strategic partnership is an incentive for the Gulf and Jordanian private sector to inc increase trade exchange rates. He stressed the importance of realising the four freedoms stipulated in the Manama Declaration for the Arab private sector. 
Nas said that accelerating the steps of economic integration will increase the chances of achieving economic citizenship among GCC countries. He praised the strong and well-established historical fraternal relations between the GCC countries and Jordan, which strive to develop their strategic partnership in all fields. A delegation of the parliamentary group participated in a virtual seminar organised by the Interparliamentary Union, the IPU, on launching the IPU guidelines on artificial intelligence in parliaments. The delegation included the first Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakro, Chairperson of the Shura Council Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, Lawyer Dalal Zayed, and Representative Council Member Hassan Ibrahim. The seminar showcased experiences from various parliaments and legislative councils around the world in utilising AI to enhance parliaments and legislative processes, improve efficiency and better serve citizens. Key challenges and risks associated with AI adoption were also discussed. The CEO of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, Sarah Bihaji, announced that Bahrain will receive 12 cruise ships in December as part of the Bahrain Fest season 2024 celebrations. Bahiji highlighted the arrival of these luxury cruise ships underscore Bahrain's status as a leading regional tourist destination, offering diverse attractions to international visitors. The CEO said that the cruise tourists will be able to enjoy Bahrain festive season 2024 activities, winter beach tourism and organised tours to heritage sites, markets and shopping centres. She commended the efforts of the Cruise Arabia Alliance, which includes Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, Dubai and Oman, in promoting the Gulf as a unified destination for international tourists and strengthening the inter-Gulf tourism. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority announced the calendar of events and activities for the celebrated Bahrain season to celebrate the Kingdom's national holidays. The calendar includes a wide range of family, musical, cultural and sporting events that will take place throughout December. Music